All right, fantastic story here in Nehemiah. Uh, look at verse number 18. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse number 18. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. That's the title of the sermon tonight, is Strengthening Your Hands for This Good Work. Listen, all throughout the history of God's people, there have been times to build, and today is one of those times. In our life, in this church, it's time to build. Amen. Look, you look at the times of, of Jerusalem here, and there was a time where they built, and a time they were destroyed. There was a time they, they, they plucked down, and a time they built again. And, you know, here in Jacksonville, Florida, there have, been, there have been things torn down and built up and torn down, and guess what? Now it's time to build. Amen. And look here, it says, The hand of my God, which was good upon me. God has been good to us, and He is strengthening our hands to do this work. He is making it possible for us to come together. He is making it possible, and He is paving the way. He is blessing our work and blessing our hand. Look at verse 19, the next, the next verse here. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn. They're mocking them. They're making they're to scorn. They're scorning them. Like, what are you going to do? Who do you think you are? He says, and despised us. They began to hate them. And said, what is this thing you will do? Will ye rebel against the king? Will ye rebel against it? Do you have permission to do that? Did the king let you do it? Is the pope letting you do it? No. The Lord God Almighty is our king. Amen. There is but one king and that's Jesus. He is our king and we are submitted to Him. Right. And God will provide. He will strengthen our hand. Look at the next verse. Verse number 20. Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, He will prosper us. Therefore we His servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, nor right, nor memorial in Jacksonville. You want to laugh us to scorn? You want to mock what God's trying to do? You want to follow a man instead of the Lord Jesus Christ? You have no portion with us. You don't belong in a church that's following the Lord Jesus Christ if you want to follow a man. That's right. I want you to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 31. Listen, God will strengthen you physically and spiritually and mentally throughout your life. You are going to have times of ups and downs. The Christian life literally is a roller coaster. Big hills, little hills. Big drop-offs, little drop-offs. Little you know, corkscrews here and there, right? Sometimes it's fun, times, sometimes it's scary. In the Christian life, there's always ups and downs. And as Christians, the Word of God is our guide. It's to remind us all the way through that God will strengthen our hand. Our trust needs to be in the Lord. Do not trust your own arm, your own strength, your own ability, your own intellect. You need to continue to trust in the Lord. The Bible reminds us about that all the, th all the way throughout the Bible. All of those great stories of great success, and then you see failures. It happens time again and from generation to generation. I believe here in Jacksonville, God has a, a powerful generation and a small remnant. He's going to use a few people to do a mighty work, not just of soul winning, but of discipleship and follow-up and changing lives and helping people to get on fire for God. Yeah. And it starts with us humbling ourselves and following God's plan. It starts with us remembering that the Bible is here to lead us and guide us and remind us that our trust is in the strength of the Lord. And through that, He will give us the strength to do it. Yep. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 31. Look at verse number 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, He it is that doth go with thee, He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. He says, I don't care how big the enemy is. I don't care how much you think you have to accomplish. I don't care how... You people you have, give God the glory, give God the credit. He's much bigger than them. Have courage knowing that the Lord is our confidence. The Lord is who we trust in. Our strength only comes from the Lord. All throughout the Bible, we see these reminders. And we're going to look at three or four in a row here that was given to the same group of people. Look at the next verse, verse 7. And Moses called unto Joshua 
and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give to them. And thou shalt cause them to inherit it. He says, hey man, you want to be a leader? Strengthen up. Remember that the Lord is in control. Remember that it's God that gives you the strength. And you have to remind your people of that. You have to remind your wife that God is our courage. God is our strength. You have to remind our children that the Lord has a land for us to inherit. That the heathen will one day become saved and will join us in church. We have to remind each other of this. Look at verse 8. And the Lord, He it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee. Fear not. Neither be dismayed. Go to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. It's God that will go before you. It's God that will conquer the enemy before we get there. It's God that will fight for us. It's God that will give your hand strength to be able to win. It's God that will give your heart the encouragement and the patience and the wisdom that we need to win the battle. In Ephesians 6, he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. How do we be strong in the Lord? In whose power? His might. Confidence that God is bigger than any problem we have. God can provide for all of our needs. Are you willing to to just believe that? Just to trust Him. Just read His Word and see His promises that He wants us to prosper spiritually. We have nothing to fear, but we must remind ourselves where our strength comes from and that God is our strength. You're in Joshua chapter 1. Look at verse number 8. Verse number 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So it's the book of the law, day and night. How do we stay strong in the Lord? Get in the book of the law, both day and night, so that we may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. If I were to ask the question, who wants to be successful? Everyone that understands what I'm saying would raise their hand. Well, how do we be successful? According to this, we need to make a goal of morning and evening having the anchor of our life and our lifestyle around the Word of God. We need to make a goal to say, well, if I can get up 10 minutes earlier, I can start in the Word of God. If I can just get the kids to bed 10 minutes earlier, I can end in the Word of God. Take 15 minutes. Take 20. Listen, the goal here is to find strength day and night, start your day, end your day, by looking to the Lord. Brother Brother Ross passed out these CDs with Scripture songs. He says that his family sings those around their Bible time. What a day to, what a way to start your day. What a way to end your day. You say, well, Brother Fannin, I just don't have a voice for music. Hey, amen, brother, I hear you, right? <laughs> Especially today, I'm losing my voice. I'm starting to sound like Brother Jake, right? You say, but no, you don't, you don't understand. My wife won't even let me sing in the shower. She beats on the... You know, I, I, I sound like a dead frog. It's okay. Make a joyful noise. Open a hymnal. Listen to these Scripture songs and just learn the words and do your best and sing from the heart and God will be pleased. And then that tune will stick with you throughout the day. Look at verse number 9 here. Joshua 1, verse number 9. Have not I commanded thee? He's saying, hey, this is a commandment. Pay attention. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God it is, is with thee whithersoever thou goest. He's saying, I have commanded you to not be afraid. I, if you are afraid of your situation, your job, the world, the bills, you're in sin. He says, fear God. He says, haven't I commanded you to not be afraid? Jump ahead to chapter 10. Joshua chapter 10. He is with us. He is our strength. And he had to keep reminding these same people, oh, and by the way, don't forget, God's your strength. God will go before you. God will fight your battles. You're in Joshua chapter 10. Find verse number 22. Then said Joshua, Open the mouth of the cave and bring out those five kings unto me out of the cave. And they did so, and they brought forth those five kings out of the cave. 
the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon. And it came to pass when they brought out those kings unto Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel. Right? So there's five kings that have been fighting against them. But but these are these big name people. They're fighting against us. What are we going to do? We're going to trust God. And then when God puts them in our hand, what does He do? The man of God brings them forth and He says, I want everybody's attention. Everybody pay attention here. God's going to set and line up these five kings. Watch what He does. He calls for all the men of Israel. It said unto the captains of the men of war which went with him, come near. Put your feet upon the necks of these kings. And they came near and put their feet upon the necks of them. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom ye fight. Again, he's saying the same thing. Don't be afraid. Be strong in the Lord. This is the same charge that he had in Deuteronomy. Same charge in the beginning of the chapter of Joshua. Same charge right here in chapter 10. Only this time he's reminding everybody, bring everybody out, show them that we're defeating these kings. Yeah, but what if it's a uh, uh, a, a, a lady pastor, bishop, what's her name? Bishop uh, Sheila Thompson. Thompson uh-huh, right? Hey, God will defeat the enemies. Amen. We have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about. There is no hurdle that's too big for God to jump over. Right. There is no fight too big, no enemy too big. God will give us the victory. Our strength is in Him. Look what He does in verse 26. Afterward, Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees and they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. Go to Joshua 23. You think you got a big enemy? You think you got a big problem in life? You think you have a big problem to solve? Hey, God is bigger. Boy, yeah, but these are five kings. Don't you understand? God is bigger than five kings. Yeah. And He has stronger hands, and He will make our hands stronger than any enemy that will stand against us. So long as we remember that He is our strength. So long as we remember if we fear Him and obey Him, We have no fear about what man can do unto us. If we keep things in order by obeying Him, He will bless us and protect us and preserve us. You're in Joshua 23. Look at verse number 5. And the Lord your God, He shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight. And ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God hath promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses that ye turn not aside therefore from the right hand to the left hand he says keep what's written in the book open your Bible and obey what it says let's not lose the focus we're looking at this building and we're oh no we got this Uh oh what about that we got a dead what about this how are we gonna work it out brother Dale says let's just move forward I believe God's going to bless it, and I believe He's right. God will fight for us. He's gone out from before us. He's already opened up this door, and He will conquer any enemy that stands in the way so long as we are right with God. So long as we are doing it for the glory of God. So long as we humble ourselves and obey Him and put Him first, the glory and the battle goes to Him. He Look what he says here, the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn not aside from the right hand to the left hand. Don't give up. Don't go the other way. Well, I'm just going to go back to that liberal church. I'm going to go to that mega church. They really got it going on. They got that hologram pastor. <laughs> they got that pastor that, that lives thousands of miles away that tells them how it is. Well, that's not a pastor. That's a title. <laughs> so it's starting to sound like the uh, image of the beast, you know. Or we, we have a leader. He's just not here, you know. Yeah. We, he's here in spirit only. Look at verse number 7. That ye come not among these nations that these remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor calls to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. Again, when you go in the land, don't do what they did. When you go in the land, don't mix yourself with them. When you go in the land, don't worship their idols, don't marry their daughters, don't get involved with their wicked ways. Do it God's way. And He will bless that. That is part of winning the battle. Verse 8, He says, But cleave unto the Lord your God as ye have done unto this day. Clean. I mean, when you love your wife, you give her a big old hug. You love your child, you give him a big old hug. Right? You know, you know what a meat cleaver is? It's a handle with a hook that when you put it in that piece of flesh, it ain't going nowhere. God says, that's how, that's how I want your relationship with me. I want you to get hooked on me, get a hold of me, and not let go. 
If you will cleave unto God, He will give you victory and strength in all your battles. Verse number 9, he says, For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong. But as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. He says, don't forget how strong God has made you. Not one person could stand and stop what God was doing. No one could stop what God was doing because God is bigger. Verse number 10, One man of you shall chase a thousand. Can you, can you even fathom that? One man chasing a thousand. Alright, let's, let's come back to reality for a second. Two men could probably beat up most one of one man, right? I mean, maybe Brother Doug's the exception, right? It might take like five to get him, right? But let's, just, right, let's say even three or four men it might take to really just beat up one man. Well, here God's saying you... If God is with you, a thousand men can't stop you. And not only that, the gates of hell will not prevail. Right. You will chase them off. They will be running from you. That's the kind of victory God wants to provide. Amen. But it starts with faith. It starts with understanding our courage is in the Lord. Our trust comes from the Word of God. He tells us what to do. And we know if we obey it, He will strengthen our hand for this fight. He says, One man of you shall chase a thousand for the Lord your God. He it is that fighteth for you as He hath promised you. How does one Christian chase a thousand? It's because it's really God's mighty Spirit that's fighting for you. He's scaring them off. He's running them off. And you're just the instrument that He's using. Look at verse 11. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Take good heed unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God. Your God. Go to Nehemiah chapter 6. Go back to Nehemiah, this time chapter number 6. He's saying, you take heed. That means, very important, you need to make this a priority. Make sure you love God. Hey, didn't God say, if you love me, keep my commandments? Yeah. Isn't that what we ought to do? Well, take heed. Make it a priority. Even the little stuff. Man, don't be bitter at your wives. Wives, don't back talk your husbands. Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Listen, men, work hard. Be good leaders. Women, do, do your job in raising those children and being patient, long-suffering with them. If we obey God's commandments for our life, then God will bless us. If you're single and you say, well, I don't have a wife yet, well, you better start obeying the commandments now, and then God will give you a good wife. That's right. Then God will make sure He gives you the right spouse that will treat you right. You're in Nehemiah chapter 6. Find verse number 5. Then sent Sanballat his servant unto me in like manner, the fifth time with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen, and Gashmu saith it, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. Now wait a minute. He's saying, look, look what he's saying here. Oh, it's reported among the heathen. Oh, and Gash, who's Gashmu? Who cares? Right? Who do you think? Oh, well, so and so said. I don't care what so and so said. I'm going to stick with what I know God said. I'm going to stick with what I know is right. I'm going to go by what we can prove. But he's bringing this accusation, Gasmu sayer, that thou and the Jews think to rebel. For which cause thou buildest the wall, that thou mayest be their king. According to these words. What's all oh, you false accusers? You're going you're gonna to self-ordain yourself as a king. That's what you're doing. That's why you're building a house of God. That's why you're having a church. You want all the glory. You're going to self-ordain and become your own king. Right? Oh, that's what Gashmu said. Yeah, well, Gashmu's a liar. And so is Sanballat. These people are liars and they're working for the devil. Look at the next verse. And thou hast also appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying... There is a king in Judah. And now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come now therefore and let us take counsel together. Listen, if you'll just work with me now, don't worry, we'll cover it up. Hey, there's nothing to cover up. You're the one that's in the wrong. Look, these guys are lying and saying, if you'll come talk with me, we can settle this. He says, no, I'm here. I'm doing a mighty work for God. Why should I come down from this wall? Why should I stop from the work? We're moving forward. We're not going to stop and talk with you. The guy's coming lying. Look at him. Look at verse number 8. Then sent I unto him, saying, There are no such things done as thou sayest, but thou feignest them out of thine own heart. You're a faker. You're a liar. You're making it up is what he's saying. Verse 9, he says, For they all made us afraid, saying, Their hands shall be weakened from the work that it be not done. He's saying, 
There are people in the church that are afraid we're not going to have church anymore if we don't work with Gashmu and Sanballat. If we don't go make some sort of a peace accord with them. But they're lying. They made it up. They're feigning it out of their hearts. So what's he say? Now therefore, O oh God, strengthen my hands. He's saying, God, take away this fear. God, make us strong again. God, make us to be revived knowing that our trust is in the Lord's strength and not our own. Amen. Go to Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. Paul went through something similar and he said, Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known that all the Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. He's saying, hey, they tried to stop me. Even my friends that I'm working with, my brothers in Christ, they tried to stop me. Everybody left me, but that's okay. God used me. And God wrote 14 books through him. God got many people saved. Many, many churches started and, and encouraged through the works of Paul. And he said, the Lord stood with me. The Lord strengthened me. Where was Paul's confidence? Why was Paul strong? Because he knew the Lord was strong. Why was Paul strong? Because he knew the Lord was the one strengthening him. Nehemiah chapter 8. Look at verse number 2. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of the men and the women, and all that could hear with the understanding. Hey, that sounds like a family integrated church. Right? The men, the women, all that can understand. Upon the first day of the seventh month, and read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women, and those that could understand, and the ears of the people, listen, were attentive unto the book of the law. The people wanted to hear it. They were paying attention. They were attentive. They were dialed in. They are trying to write things down. That lady from the sermon this morning, she's like, I am a note taker, and I ran out of room. You were saying so many, I had this verse over here, and I ran out of room taking note. Praise the Lord. She was attentive. That she wanted to hear these verses and write them down for later. That's the type of a church that we ought to be. Looking for the book of the law. Attentive to it. Look at verse 4. And Ezra, the scribe, stood upon a pulpit of wood which they had made for the purpose. Hey, look at that. The Lord strengthened the hands of our brother so that he could make a pulpit of wood for this purpose, so we can read the book of the law, yep. so we can strengthen our hand in the Lord, so we can be encouraged and understand the vision of the Lord. Look at verse number 8. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. This is the goal of church and of preaching. To make it distinct. Well, what does distinct mean? Distinct means it stands out. Right? Well, I've read that verse before, but it really stood out the way you expounded it and explained it. Now I understand it applies to me. Right? To make it distinct in your life and understand what God's purpose for that verse, that passage, these scriptures, it says, and gave the sense. Sense. You can understand it. You comprehend it. You can get a hold of it. That's the purpose of preaching in the church. And if we continue letting God be our strength, that's the type of preaching He will keep in the church. Distinct. Giving the sense. And cause them to understand the reading. Everyone in here knows it, that there are other churches, all they do is reading. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Sounds like Charlie Brown's mom, right? And you're like, what in the world are they even saying? I don't understand it. I feel tired just from sitting there and listening to them. I feel so good now that I'm out of there. Hey man, I don't want church to be like that. I want church to be distinct, giving the understanding. I believe the purpose of church is for men of God to learn to preach so they can stand up and give the understanding as well. So we can go out and give the understanding and make it clear to the world. That's our goal here. Look at verse 9. In Nehemiah which is the Tershatha, which that means governor, if you, if you remember when we did the series on Ezra. It says, And Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. When people heard where they were missing in life, where they were messing up on God's law, they were grieved at heart. They were, oh no, they're crying, they're weeping, they're upset. They're upset with themselves. And it says, hey, don't mourn. Don't be upset. This is a chance to fix things. This is a chance to grow now that you know the truth. Verse 10. 
Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the Lord, I'm sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. What he's saying is you ought to have joy from hearing the word of the Lord and that ought to strengthen you. Instead of being discouraged, oh no, I've just, I just heard what he said and I'm breaking God's law, you should have some joy. You can hear the words of the Lord and that you have the Spirit of the Lord to help you get it right. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It's a good song. But what does it mean? The joy of the Lord is my strength. He's saying rejoice. David, at a downtime, he encouraged himself in the Lord. His encouragement, his joy, came from the Lord. That's what reinvigorated him, and he went back out to the battle. Right? We need to rejoice in the downtime and say, you know what? They can take away my life, but they can't take me from they can't take me from God. They can't take my soul. They can't take the blessings that God's given me. You think about it in Acts chapter 16, the famous chapter where they're in prison. When they first get thrown in prison, Paul and Silas, they start singing praises. They're praying to the Lord. The other prisoners hear them. Can you imagine? These guys are getting beat up, accosted, locked up. It's certain death for them. Oh, they're those Christians we've heard so much about. And what are they doing? They're coming in singing a psalm. Singing a hymn. Praising the Lord. Praying unto God. And you know what happens next? A great earthquake. Boy, I didn't see that coming. Yeah, that's right. Their strength was in the joy of... And then God took care of their physical needs. He took care, He worked that miracle and opened the doors for them. I want you to turn to Psalm chapter 18. Psalm chapter 18. There's many stories throughout the Bible where people have to be reminded that our strength comes from the Lord. Our trust is in the Lord. And certain people, I mean, they, they waver. They go back and forth. They win a battle, they lose a battle. And you know, in your Christian life, you're going to have down days. Just, just go ahead and accept that. Just know that. So when it hits you like a ton of bricks, don't say, well, this is it. This is the end. Oh, me. What was that cartoon character, Eeyore? Oh, me. Oh, my. Right, always down in the mouth. What was the other one? Linus always had a cloud over his head. Right, like, that's not the type of Christian we ought to be. We're not always, oh, boy, I, feel, I don't know. It's just, it's been crazy. It's been miserable. All right, the one I let, if it got any better, I wouldn't be able to stand it. Is that true? Well, make it true. God's so good to me, I don't deserve anything I've got. He's blessed me with so much, I need to speak some life into the people around me. I need to encourage them. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. When you're having a bad day, sing that tune, hum that hymn, and God will give you strength in your spirit. He'll give you victory. You're in Psalm chapter 18. Look at verse number 29. Well, how are we going to fight these battles, Brother Fannin? Listen to what God can do. Verse number 29. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust Him. Hey, God's way is perfect. It's through His word. Are you in the Word? If you're having a bad day, my first question would be, have you read your Bible yet? If not, fix that. Well, I'm at work. You don't understand. I don't get much time. Well, sneak off. Go in the bathroom. Get your pocket New Testament. Get on your phone. Man, read a chapter. Yeah, but I work outdoors. It's heavy. Oh, go sit in the truck for a second. Read the Word of God. Get it in your heart. Meditate on that. And let the joy of the Lord be your strength. Find a moment of peace with the Lord. The word of the Lord is tried, it says here. He is a buckler to those that trust in Him. He is a shield. Buckler is a shield. He's saying, if you will just sit and study the Word of God for a minute, that will be a shield for you throughout the day. Verse 31, it says, For who is God? Save the Lord. Or who is a rock? Save our God. It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. You hear that? It's God that gives me strength. It's God that girdeth me with strength. It's God that strengthens my hands and through His Word makes my way perfect. Verse 33. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me on high places. He can run faster. He can jump over walls. He can do all these things through the power of God He's talking about. right? Verse 34. He teacheth my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. 
Can you imagine that? That I'd say that would be a miracle. Yeah. Well, are, is, is, are your God in the business of miracles? Is your God in the business? I've heard people, oh, you know, I don't know how it happened, but I was able, I was praying, and I just pushed a car out of the ditch, and I saved somebody's life. I knew somebody said that one time. Well, it's possible. <laughs> Sounds like a, like a fish tail to me, but you know what? The joy of the Lord is my strength. Maybe, hey, maybe God used that person and gave them supernatural, supernatural, yeah, from God. Out of the flesh, not from nature, from God. It's spiritual. God can spiritually strengthen us. He will physically strengthen us, and He will mentally strengthen us to have victories in these battles. Verse 35, he says, Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation in thy right hand. Hath hold me up. And thy gentleness hath made me great. Let's meditate on this part for just a second. Thy gentleness hath made me great. Remember what he said, um, my grace is sufficient for me. He says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yeah, but Lord, who am I? Right? You remember the little boy? I, all I've got is these, this fish and these loaves. Perfect. That's weak. We can use that. What about those 300 men that went to battle? That's just 300 and they didn't even have a sword. Perfect. God, His, his strength was made perfect through the weakness of men. When men will humble themselves and recognize their own weakness and say, I can't do it without you, God says, good, I'm glad. I, I was waiting for you to say that. Now let me step in and give some victory. Now let me strengthen you in the Spirit and help you overcome. And he says, thy gentleness hath made me great. The gentleness of God, the grace of God, is what makes us great sometimes. When we recognize it comes from Him. Verse 36, thou hast enlarged my steps under me, that my feet did not slip. Jump ahead to Psalm 84 and we'll be done with this. Psalm chapter 84. In Psalm 27 he says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. How, oh, I'm just faint of heart. Well, you need your heart strengthened? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Where's your trust? In the Lord. Yeah. Psalm 31 he says, Be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. We're to be strong in heart, I mean, that's like mental, that's spiritual, that's having it all together. And listen, we as Christians, there's time we don't have it together, and that's okay. That's the best time to acknowledge the Lord and just say, Lord, I'm weak right now. Lord, I'm having a bad day right now. Lord, I want to do those things I don't want to do. That's good that you're, you're able to recognize those things, confess those things, and then trust in the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. In Ephesians 3, he says that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. It's by God's Spirit in our inner man that we're able to overcome these things. Psalm 84, look at verse number 4. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee. Selah. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee in whose heart are the ways of them. What's he saying? There's a blessing for the man that recognizes the only strength he has comes from the Lord. Yeah, yeah but you, I, I can do 100 push-ups. Who cares? Where's your real strength? Where's your real strength? God can take your arm out. God can yeah. take your leg out. God can take your mind out. Yeah. Brother Joseph was just talking about last week or a week ago, somebody, a regular in his store, just, just died right there on the spot. Had a heart attack in the middle of the store. I'd stop everything. Well, he wasn't planning that. That guy was going shopping. He was just taking care of business. Right? We don't know when things are going to happen. Meanwhile, blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. If we're going to overcome the battles, if we're going to strengthen our hands to do this great work, we need to recognize that our trust is in Him. Amen. Look at verse number 10. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. <coughs> He's saying, one day in heaven is better than a thousand of the best days on earth. Amen. Well, who is the best man on earth was the question asked of Jesus, right? What did Jesus say? John the Baptist is the greatest. There is not a greater man that has ever existed, and yet the smallest, the least, the least important person that was in heaven at the time was still greater than John the Baptist. The very best man on the earth was not as good as the least in heaven. A day in thy courts is better than a thousand. 
I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Now we joke about this. I mentioned this in my sermon this morning, right? Oh, everybody says, well, I'll just, I'd rather be the doorkeeper, brother. I'm too busy. I don't have time to actually serve God and preach the gospel and raise my family. I can't get to all. I'm saved, bless God. You know, we'll just let it send abound. Hey, no, don't do that. And they use this. They'll reference this. But who's writing this? King David, by the Spirit of God, he was a ruler and a reigner. He was a man of God. The New Testament says he was a prophet. He had a heart after God. And he says, I'm okay with being the least in heaven. What's he doing? He's humbling himself. Lord, if you'll just use little old me. Somehow, anyhow, I'll do it. Open a door, I'll step through it, even if it's not the door I want. Lord, I'm glad to be with you one day in heaven than to reign for a thousand days on the earth. Lord, I will be a servant when I get to heaven. I'll serve other brothers and sisters when I get to heaven. Just let me get there. That's the heart of a man that I promise you will be ruling and reigning in the millennium. He has done great mighty works for God. He was a prophet for God. God pointed back to him and looked at him. He wrote a ton of Scripture for the Lord. But what's he saying? I'm okay with being the doorkeeper. The person that said that is the one doing all the work. Today, the person that says that, that's their excuse for not doing the work. King David was a great man of God. His strength clearly came from the Lord. He overcame the lions. He overcame bears. He had miracles worked at his hands. Because his strength was in the Lord. His trust was in God. Verse number 11. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing shall be withheld from them that walk uprightly. Again, not forgetting it's our purpose to please Him while we're on the earth. To obey Him. Verse 12. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in Thee. How will we strengthen our hands to do this great work? We're going to trust God. We're going to say, I see it. God's opened the door. We're going to do it. Yeah, but we haven't worked out all the logistics. That's okay. Let God do that. Let's just trust Him and walk through the door and praise Him and glorify Him through it all. And we will see great and mighty things happen in Jacksonville for God's glory. He says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. All things. Not a few. Not some. All things. You remember we read this in a sermon uh, a week ago in Judges 7 where he said, But if thou fear to go down, go thou with fur of thy servant down to the host. And if thou, sh- and if thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went they down with Pharaoh's servant to the outside of the armed men of the host. Remember the story? He goes down and listens. The men pro- are telling the dream in the tent. He hears it. He praises God. He worships. And he says, okay, they're afraid of the sword of Gideon. And Gideon says, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. How was Gideon's hand strengthened to do that? God said, well, if you're afraid, just go listen. And that will strengthen your hand. The fear of the Lord will strengthen your hand. Obeying the Lord will strengthen your hand. When we started in Nehemiah, he said, the hand of my God, which was good upon me. Listen, God is good upon this congregation. God's done some awesome things for us over the past year and a half, and He's not done yet. He's got a lot more to do, and it's not just up to us. We need to be willing to work. We need to be willing to squeeze in tight buildings for a little while. We need to be willing to work through difficult situations. and You know, it's okay. God will get the glory through it all, he's doing something great and mighty, and I'm excited to see what he's doing this year. Let's strengthen our hands for this good work. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you. Lord, we love you. I'm so happy for just the, the victories you've given us, Lord. Even in what seems like trying times, Lord, there's amazing victories coming out of it. There's stronger families and strongly, stronger friendships coming out, Lord. Just as it said in Nehemiah, it's time for us to arise and to build... And Lord, we do believe that You have a portion, a right, and a memorial here for us in Jacksonville. And Lord, we're strengthening our hands to do the work. We're trusting You and You alone to provide. Lord, I pray that You would help us to stay focused and give You the glory for all the victories. Lord, we love You and we ask You to keep us safe and just bless our fellowship tonight. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.